and we have to really escalate the noise we make so that we'll be heard. I'm Andy Hum. And I am Yetta Curlin. Yetta Curlin filling in this week for Ann Northrup, who's perfectly fine. I spoke to her. She's fine. But it's great to have you. Thank you. Great uh, to be here. Yetta, you are a community activist in Greenwich Village and Chelsea and actually running for city council this year. I am. And one of the other candidates happens to be our other sometime uh, substitute co-host, Corey Johnson. So everybody's in the mix. Great. Okay. So let's, tell, let's talk about what's going on in the news this week. Sure. Hey. Have you been reading the papers? Britain and France uh, have advanced their bills to open marriage to same-sex couples. And uh, ongoing Defense Secretary Leon Panetta is putting forth some benefits for same-sex partners for service members. Yeah, that's a, that's a big breakthrough. Uh, President Obama has called on the Boy Scouts to evolve already as the Scouts Board has delayed making a decision on changing their ban on gay scouts and scout masters. And former New York City Mayor Ed Koch dies at the age of 88. Unlamented by myself, and I'll talk about that, about his record on gay and AIDS issues. Uh, a complaint was filed against an Oregon baker uh, who refuses to make wedding cakes for a lesbian couple. And Illinois moves towards passage of marriage equality. Uh, the Super Bowl uh, champion Baltimore Ravens have this play player, uh, Brendan Ayan Badejo, who's very much for uh, marriage equality, and he sure used his visibility this week uh, to advocate for that. We'll, we have a tape at the end of the show we're going to show you about and I, that. I think it helped them win the Super Bowl as well. Uh, we'll, we'll talk, we'll talk about, about, that. about that. And, of course, the new head of Disney World is an out gay man. Wow. Uh, a Tennessee legislator wants to make it mandatory for school counselors to report it to parents if a child says he or she is uh, gay or lesbian. And a gay dog is saved from euthanasia. It's a true story, and uh, I'm going to start off with a correction from last week. We sure. were talking about Jim Neighbors, who got married, and I said that he, used to, he always sings the national anthem at the Indy 500. No! He sings back home in Indiana. That's what he sings, of course, and I've seen him do it. Uh, and I just wish he would do more for the marriage movement as much as he does for the Indy 500. But let's get to the news. So, big breakthroughs in uh, Britain and France this yeah. week. Uh, the, the French marriage bill cleared its first parliamentary vote right. uh, by a wide margin. And although they added five, the opposition added 5,000 amendments to it. I mean, I've never heard of a legislature adding 5,000 amendments to anything, but they obviously are digging their heels in. I don't know what that means. Right, and Britain is moving forward. I know it's passed in the House of Commons yesterday, uh, but it does only apply to uh, England and Wales. It does not apply to Ireland or Scotland. Scotland's doing its own thing. Yes, I don't know what Ireland is doing, but yes, it applies to England and Wales. But this, this was a, now don't forget, this was brought by a conservative government, yeah, yeah. by the Tories. The, the, the Tories, the Conservative Party in Britain, is sort of to the left of the Democratic Party in this country in, in many respects, although they're in trouble because of all their austerity stuff, which Obama is not doing, although he may have to, I don't know, in the current budget negotiations, right, I yeah. don't know. But this was a this was a huge vote in 400 uh, to 175. That's that's a big margin. It was a huge yeah. margin, and most of the votes, of course, came from the Labour Party, right. which is now favored in the polls in the next election, which is not until 2015. But Prime Minister Cameron is seen to be in trouble over this, even though he what he had what he called a free vote. Right. This is going to be a conscience vote. You can vote how you want. You're not right. going to be judged by it by the party. He lost a little over half of his members, that's right. and that's split. showing that they're not backing him up. And a lot of conservative people in Britain are not in favor of same-sex marriage. Well, I think it's interesting that it's so split. There, you could equally say a lot of conservative people in Britain are in favor of same-sex marriage. Yes. So. You, uh, th that's, uh, I'm trying to look are, at the glass half full, you Andy. Are, you are doing the right <laughs> thing. So this is not over. It, right. It's going to take uh, a, little, uh, a, a, a bit longer. Here's what can happen in Britain. Now, first of all, this has to go to committee, and mm -hmm. there could be amendments to it. Mm -hmm. We don't know what's going to happen there. They could have 5,000 amendments as well. No, I don't think, well, I don't we know about 5,000, but, yeah. uh, you know, they're not the French. Uh, so, but they're going to they're going to work on it. But here's the other thing: 
A bill in Britain has to go through the House of Lords. That's we right. think it's an anachronism, but the, and the House of Lords cannot stop legislation from going into effect. Right. It can stop it for a year. Right. Just put a stop to it for a year, and that's all. Then the House of Commons back can to the come House back. Of Commons, right. But the head of Stonewall over there in Britain said, I, I, it's going to be tough in the House of Lords, but I don't think they can look at this vote that you just announced yeah. so wide. And Yeah, I don't think well, they can stop it. But, but worse has happened, but uh, we're cautiously optimistic. Uh, in this neck of the woods, uh, Sean Eldridge is running for Congress, husband of Facebook uh, founder uh, uh, yeah, Chris I, Hughes, and uh, he's running up in Hudson and against the GOP. Uh, uh, Chris Gibson. Oh, Chris, yes. And, uh, and adjacent to where uh, Sean Patrick Maloney just won uh, openly uh, out right. gay. Uh, uh, These are young guys. Handsome. I think we have, we have a picture of them there. Uh, we, uh, good, looking, um, good looking, handsome guys. Well, I mean, here's the, you know, uh, another, the other Facebook founder, the, the big one, Mark Zuckerberg, yes. is throwing a fundraiser for Jersey. Chris Christie, yes. Yes. Uh, which is in, people are highly critical of because Chris Christie is an opponent of, of marriage equality. But Zuckerman did something smart because then he turned around and did, or is involved in a fundraiser with, um, what's, what's Garden State Equality, right? So he's doing a, a pro-LGBT thing out in New Jersey. Is to he try giving to with one hand taking from the other? I, I don't believe, I certainly don't believe in, I, 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 you know, in throwing and helping people who are opposing our rights. Uh, but we, we'll, we can talk a little bit about that when we talk about Ed Koch well, a little bit later. Well, I'm certainly not condoning it. I'm just saying it was kind of a, a two-handed move. But interestingly, um, uh, uh, Sean Eldridge has been a big money out of politics advocate. So we'll see how he runs his campaign, if it's true to form, in terms of the money out of politics message that he's been bringing. Now let's talk about what's going on at the Pentagon, because this is also big mm -hmm. news this week. Yeah. Uh, Leon Panetta is leaving. Uh, the president is trying to get Chuck Hagel in there, who had a terrible time at his hearing. <laughs> and people still expect him to get through. He yeah. had to say, you know, I'm sorry for all being so anti-gay over the right. years, all that kind of stuff. Right. Uh, and of course, most of it was about Iran and Israel in his hearing. And he was given, being given a lot of trouble by Republicans about that. Uh, apparently, did, but Leon Panetta is still the Secretary of Defense. That's right. And he is, uh, uh, maybe this has happened by the time you see this, uh, going to announce some kinds of benefits for same-sex uh, partners of service members uh, yeah. on bases. Some of this has been evolving. Uh, we actually have a picture of what's going on at West Point there. If we can pull that up. I don't know if you can pull that one up. There they are. This is at, this is at West Point on this big party weekend that they have. And there's one of the cadets with his date uh, right. right out in the open, right. pictures posted, all that kind of stuff. It's quite charming. And it shows that uh, it's no big deal, and it's evolving, and you know, and that's great. I wonder what the greater service uh, community is doing in terms of this. I wonder if they've seen people be supportive of other service members, or if there's been a resistance. From well, they're, they're, I mean, you know, uh, this is happening on a case-by-case -case basis, where you know, can they come to the spouses club? Can they right. do this, that? And it's, it ha and m most of it is fairly positive, but they're not getting the benefits they need. So, what the service members' defense league and places like that are doing mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. is they've made out a big long list of the kinds of things that the Panetta could do with the stroke of a pen around housing, ID cards, sure. access to commissaries, very important, you get cheap goods, uh, personnel assignments that you can take your uh, spouse with you, uh, all that kind of stuff is on the table and the, the point is that the Defense Department has to do it without violating the Defense of Marriage Act which forbids Federal recognition it's of an interesting marriage. irony that we were able to win on, on, on Don't Ask, Don't Tell and still have to deal with DOMA as it comes to service members. On, on another international issue, um, pardon me, on another national issue, Supreme Court DOMA cases are making a lot of headlines. Yes, um, they are. Windsor, the Prop 8 stuff in California. Well, we know that they're coming to the court March 26th and 27th. Uh, and, uh, well, let's talk about what's going on sure. and what the news developments are. Uh, one, the, parent, uh, the right wing has said we're going to turn everybody out and we're going to have a big demonstration in Washington. And now... But we have a bunch of folks who are organizing other uh, marches and rallies. Uh, MarriageEquality.org, if you go to there. Marriage Equality is doing a big stuff on the 26th and the 27th, not just at the Supreme Court, but all over the country. So you can check it out and get involved if you have time to go down to uh, right. D.C. They're right? asking us to come out into the streets and show our support for marriage equality when this happens. Uh, but the other big development around that was that the president's uh, solicitor general met with um, both sides of the uh, both sides yeah. of the case yeah. because 
pe what people don't understand is, is that yes, the, the federal government's on our side in trying to get rid of the defense of marriage. I mean, excuse me, the Obama administration is on our side right. in trying to get rid of the defense of marriage act. They're in, they've been in court about that. Right. They switched sides on that, which is one of the things that's at issue right. in the Supreme Court case. If they do that, is there even any case mm -hmm. uh, some of the justices have asked? And mm -hmm. that's going to be argued at the court. But there are a whole bunch of different outcomes of this case, right? right? We've been through them uh, ad nauseum okay. on the show. But we've said that there's been a lot of pressure for the Obama administration to get in on the side of the opponents of Proposition 8 and say, uh, as opposed to what the president said along, which is, I leave that to the states. Right. Get involved in Prop 8 and say that you think it's unconstitutional and we should win the case and all that kind of stuff. Right. So that's why the Solicitor General met with both sides. And uh, he is going to make some kind of a decision about uh, whether to get involved at all or to uh, help us in the case. What do you, I mean? I think it's really important, you know, and, and you see the backlash. Uh, Citizens United, uh, those guys filed an amicus brief uh, attempting not only to enforce DOMA, but to overturn uh, board versus, uh, Brown versus Board of Education. So hey, they're, hey, what, they're pulling me? out the big Wait, guns. Wait, excuse me? Yeah, Citizens they United. Overturn. Our, our friends at Citizens United. So we'll see what happens. It's there's the a, there's a lot of play. the name you associate with campaign financing and corporations being people, but they now they want to overturn Brown v. Board so we can have racial segregation. I, I don't. There's a lot at stake at this. I think it's clear that this is a, a what civil What is happening issue. in this country? More, more later when we get to Tennessee and places like that, because well, what's happening is around the country mm -hmm. is that you know. We have a Republican House, and they're very bad, uh, although they're starting to change on immigration, which is what we're going to talk about next. But state legislatures are packed with right-wingers. Uh, a majority of the legislatures are Republican, even, including in many Democrat-dominated states, yeah. even though, well, because a lot of you did not vote in the 2010 elections when these people were elected, because you only want to vote for president, and you got to vote every time. I'm, I, you know, I don't mean to be too uh, didactic about that, but people really need to pay yeah, attention. Absolutely. And in city council and elections. And in city council elections as well. As well. Yep. They need to vote. The, the local is global, Andy. And vote in the primaries. Yeah. But you didn't, so we're getting these bad bills, we're getting horrible abortion <laughs> it's bills. It's your fault. Well, uh -huh. it's our fault, yeah. all of ours. Yeah. We, we all have to pay, I mean, you know, Edward Albee, the famous playwright says, we get the government we deserve. And I realize we're at a disadvantage because we don't have all the money that citizens the United We don't have all the have. money. Republicans take up a lot of space. I mean, even when we won in this last election cycle, they gave, you know, the whole fiscal cliff thing. I mean, they really put up a fight in a way that, that Democrats so, don't. if you want to get rid of them, which I think most people would like to do, you have to vote all the time. And see, now it's even tougher to get rid of them because they drew their own districts they after their the own census. Districts. Well, but, but we would have done the same thing. Well, and we didn't have the power. To, oh, come on, Democrat. I don't think we would have done that. Democrat. Oh, are you kidding? The voter I, disenfranchisement stuff is. The, yes, there's a lot of stuff terrible. that Republicans are putting forward but that I don't think. I Democrats remember would a guy named Burton who was the head of the California Assembly years ago, and he he was a Democrat, and he showed the map of California's new districts, and uh -huh. he said, "My contribution to modern art." <laughs> you know, I mean, it's, it's come on, Democrats have Wait, been just as bad about this. A whole other show could be a discussion about the redistricting that's happening here in New York City that we're hopefully getting to the final uh, lengths with. But, but anyway. the issue that we're, we're, so there's that federal marriage issue, and uh, we'll see what the Solicitor General decides to do in the Prop 8 case. Yeah. Also federally, uh, there's this, all this stuff about immigration reform, and the president weighed in and yep. said that uh, gay should be included in it. Yep. Although when you, re when you talk to insiders, they say, well, this is like one of the first things that's likely to go uh, in a negotiation and a comprehensive reform bill. And, and probably one of the most important wins for our community. You, you know, obviously Nadler, Jerry Nadler was a huge proponent. He introduced the United, uh, United Families Act. United, uh, Uniting American Families the, Act. UAFA, right, uh, right, for some time. The DREAM Act obviously was a big win on an immigration front. It did not include LGBT families. Right. Uh, it's something that Nadler's been talking about a lot in terms of our including it. Our congressman. Our congress member, that's right. right. And uh, it would be a tremendous win for us. It seems to be a no-brainer. You can see the compelling stories of families that are broken up, having to leave the country, oh, one of them. you don't have to convince them. Yes, They're well. for it. <laughs> uh, but, the, but the interesting thing is, you know, we talked about Europe. I mean, Britain is only doing same-sex marriage now. Right. Years ago, they started letting foreign-born partners in. Right. I mean, over a decade ago. Right. It's f very funny. Most countries, it's the first thing they do. In this country, it's almost going to be like the last thing they yeah. do because I think it's partly the anti-immigrant sentiment that's out there, although 
that's all changing now. And as, as one of the congressmen said, you know, Democrats are doing this because it's the right thing. Republicans are doing it because they need to. Well, and also it takes the teeth out of the compelling arguments, some of the compelling arguments for marriage equality and repealing DOMA, if they can get rid of this, because there are these compelling stories of families that are broken up and displaced. Right. So, but, but any win is a win. We'd love to have UF, UAFA passed. We'd love to have... Uh, right. But we might get a lot of resistance from the Republicans, and don't forget we have to get it through the House on this. I mean, now, in the Senate, John McCain was asked about including LGBT in this, and he called it a red flag, and that's not an issue of paramount importance. And then Lindsey Graham, the closet case senator from South Carolina, uh, said, why don't we just put legalized abortion in there and hmm. round it all out? So they're, 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 they're digging their heels in We'll that. have to find a way to add legitimate rape to that somehow. Uh, oh. But let's talk local stuff. Uh, Ed Koch. Oh, and I will, before yeah. we leave immigration, yes. uh, just the fact that there was a meeting on this with the president this pe just this week. And one of the groups invited was uh, the uh, Immigration Equality Group, which, sure. is our, which is for LGBT. Rachel Tiven was in mm -hmm. the meeting. Uh, she said it was an off-the-record meeting, so she can't tell us what the president said. But she did say that she raised this with him and that they wanted, uh, obviously, uh, the LGBT stuff to be included. And the, pre the White House wouldn't comment on where all that is going. But again, the president has said he wants it included. The question is how hard he's going to fight for it and how hard the Democrats are going to fight for it when they're coming down to making a deal. Should we move on to the Boy Scouts? Uh, sure. Let's go to Boy Scouts. Okay. Well, uh, you know, we, as we told you, the Boy Scouts were anticipating yeah. uh, making a, a change in their policy, uh, which was, we're going we're gonna to make it, a, what was announced was, it's going to be a local option. If a local troop wants to have a gay leader, you can have them. And if you don't want to, you don't have to. Right. That was what was leaked. Right. But nothing was on paper. Um, so uh, they said they were going to probably decide this at their meeting that they're having in, I believe, Dallas right now. Right. Uh, anyway. They just announced that, the, that they're not going to make a decision until May. That's the headline, is that right. they're not going to make a decision until later. But there was a lot of pressure coming on them from both sides. Uh, we, now, there was a split in our community. Gay and Lesbian Alliance Against Defamation said, uh, this is great, great progress, we won. Right. Human Rights Campaign, not your most radical group, uh, said, this is not enough. You've right. got to get rid of the policy entirely. No discrimination. Maybe Girl, we should Girl Scouts have been able to do it for some time now. What's, yes, what's up with the Boy that? Scouts, what Andy? I Were don't you a know. Girl Scout? uh, I was I, a brownie for well, about two are. seconds. I and was then, not a yeah, Scout. Just, yeah. My father was the first Cub Scout in America. By now, the way. if True the story. Boy Scouts had been uh, open and proud of their of their gay uh, uh, kids, would you have chosen to join the Boy Scouts? Uh, it was just not something that particularly not, interested yeah. me. Yeah. I was always out in the links. But, uh, anyway, and they don't give a badge for golf. Uh, uh -huh. So uh, maybe so they let's do. See what happens. Maybe they do. No. Well, well, well. Here's the thing. Uh, the president has spoken out about this, and I, we have some videotape of him uh, being interviewed about it. If we could uh, run that in tape. an institution that we all revere. Next week, the board of the Boy Scouts of America is going to vote on whether to end their national ban on gays and scouting. Should scouting be open to gays? Yes. Why so? Well, because I think that, uh, you know, my attitude is, is that gays and lesbians should have uh, access and, and uh, opportunity uh, the same way everybody else does uh, in every institution and walk of life. And, um, you know, the, the Scouts are a great institution uh, that are uh, promoting uh, young people and exposing them to, uh, you know, opportunities and, and leadership uh, that, you know, will serve people uh, for the rest of their lives. And I think that nobody should be barred for that. We found out last... So, thank you, Mr. President. But we should also point out that even during the campaign, when Mitt Romney was asked about this, he also said the scouts should change their policy. Seems like a no-brainer. Well, except for the fact that the, the scouts are often run by the Mormon Church, uh, a lot of the chapters, the Catholic Church, mm -hmm. and the fundamentalist Protestants have been, uh, the, the fundamentalist community has been really laying on on this thing. I mean, the, uh, the evangelical community. And the line that they've adopted, Yetta, is so outrageous. They're saying, 
you would not let a heterosexual male take your little girls out on a camping trip as if something's going to happen. I don't see why you wouldn't let a, a male take the kids out. I mean, you know, nobody should be doing bad things yeah. uh, under any circumstances. And then they say, well, we're not saying that gays are pedophiles. We're just saying they're attracted to males right. and something could happen. Well, I mean, come on, give us a little credit, but they don't. They're still trying to raise that specter yes, of exactly. molestation and yep, things like yep. that, which is really, really, really awful. Right. Uh, now, there was a, we have a picture of a whole group of uh, advocates from uh, you know, the people who are trying to uh, uh, change the policy, uh, and they all went down to, uh, to uh, uh, Dallas. Do we have that picture? Of the, uh, maybe we don't. Uh, it was all a great went, picture. Yeah, they, yeah. They, all, they all went down and presented. There they are. They presented 1.4 million signatures calling for a change and wow. an end to the discrimination. Wow. It includes people like Zach Wall and Will Oliver, who's a 20-year-old Eagle Scout, and Eric Anderson, who's the father of a gay scout who was denied his Eagle Scout award. That's great. Um, you know, it's, uh, it's uh, yeah, I mean, I think people are starting to get it. Things are changing. But again, it's so rooted in religion. Yes. And as yes. somebody said... Are they going to let atheists to be scouts? Because they don't now. You have to, hmm. uh, you know, talk about God and all that kind of stuff. Hmm. So why not just let everybody be in scouting? And it's interesting that they can change gender so easily with the analogy of a heterosexual man and girls, but it's so hard for them to comprehend ideas like, uh, you know, supporting people who are transgender or understanding how they enact. And, and, and this kind of hatefulness, it really it resonates so deep and so strongly. And, and maybe that's why it's been harder for the Boy Scouts to get this kind of stuff passed. It's but, their last stand. But I'll tell you, Obama's uh, position on gay marriage, I think, made had a tremendous impact. It, it helped the NAACP come out. It helped other organizations come oh, out. Oh, they were, they were for it before that, weren't mm, they? No, Hazel Dukes, I think, came out. I, I, I think right I after think the NAACP. They were before were that. they? Yes. OK, well, maybe the yeah, NAACP inspired uh, Obama. Yes. But what I'm saying there is that when we start having these powerful he forces. Is a of color. Yeah, I, I don't know which one came out first, but, but I, I believe you if you say it was the NAACP. Yeah. Um, but the point is, the more that we'll we have our allies and our powerful uh, elected leaders standing up on this issue, hopefully it will make an impact and hopefully it'll be a movement forward. I'm a little nervous that they're now delaying it to May, but hopefully uh, we'll get some more momentum. We'll on get that. a timeline on that from uh, Paul in the control room there, who's going to look it up for us yes. and find out what the, who, who, what came first, the, the NAACP or, the or uh -huh. Obama. Yeah. All right. Now, uh, well, let's move on to a, an event that was, you know, very uh, big for a lot of us here in New York, but has national implications. And that's the passing of former Mayor Ed Koch. Now, Ed Koch was mayor of New York from 1978 until 1989. Those were his years. He had three terms as mayor. Uh, these were the most, some of the most tumultuous years in the, in the history of the gay movement. Yeah. And, of course, it's when AIDS got started in 1981. So uh, how he handled those issues became a big issue. And also who he was uh, was always a big issue. Yeah. Um, this was our bachelor mayor. Uh, who, when he was running for mayor in 1977, uh, being a single guy, held hands with a former Miss America throughout the entire campaign so that people would think that he was heterosexual, right. and yet for many years resolutely refused to discuss his uh, sexuality. Just If you asked him that question, he said a word I can't say on this show. He would just say, it, it's even in the movie Outrage when he was confronted about right. his sexuality. I mean, the fact is, he was a very famous closet case. He right. was, we, we know that he was a homosexual man um, who, um, uh, let's, I mean, let's see. The, the, you know, the biggest evidence of it, of course, was that he had a partner before he was mayor, a guy named Richard Rothen, Nathan, right. who David Rothenberg, who was one of his appointees to the Human Rights Commission, uh, talked about later. He said, I was social friends with him. I had dinner with him. And as soon as Ed became mayor, he shut this guy mm. out of his life. And he was mm. told in no uncertain terms, you, you really just should leave the city. Mm. You better not talk. And he moved to California, and he died of AIDS in 1996. And I also knew uh, a man named Dennis DeLeon, who we've talked about on this show, was the former head of the Latino Commission on AIDS, uh, who uh, also worked with Koch. Right. And for some reason, the year before he died, he came up to me at a party. And, I, you know, I knew Dennis. I served on the Human Rights Commission with him under David Dinkins. And he came up to me in a party and he said, you know, when I was first starting out in the Corp Counsel's Office, the Law Department, mm -hmm. um, Ed Koch, uh, I was called to Koch's place by a guy named Herb Rickman, who was Koch's gay assistant, 
And I showed up and, and Herb said, oh, go inside, Ed's inside, uh, go inside. And I went in and Ed was watching television and he's sitting on the bed and I, I sat down and Ed puts the moves on me, he puts his hand on my leg and starts like wanting to, and he rejected him. And then he came up to me after that and he said, oh, please don't tell anybody that story. I mean, I swear, this is the sequence of events. Oh. I felt that he wanted to unburden himself because he had been sexually harassed sure. as a young, cute lawyer sure. by Ed Koch, the mayor. And then you know, I, I didn't, I didn't, respected it until he died. He died over a year ago. And I, I think it's important to tell that story huh. because Ed Koch was a real creep. You know, I mean, I, you know, to a lot of people, they would perceive him as, uh, as pro-gay. He was, he... Well, early on he was, wasn't he? I well, mean, he co-sponsored uh, the, the bill with Bella Abzug uh, to try to include uh, LGBT folks in the 1964 Civil Rights uh, Yes, in Act. 1973, he was the chief sponsor with Bella yeah. of the federal gay rights law. Yeah. And when he became mayor, one of the first things he did was issue an executive order on gay rights, protecting city employees. All and, good. And promised within six months he would sign uh, the bill that you worked very hard uh, to ultimately pass. There's the rub. The gay rights <laughs> bill in New York. You know, the Gay Rights Bill in New York was the first one ever conceived of anywhere yep. in 1971 by the Gay Activist Alliance. You know, Alan Roscoff was involved in mm -hmm. that, Ethan Ghetto, many other people, mm -hmm. right? It almost passed in 74, 1974, it got to the floor and then it lost. But Ed Koch ran saying, I can get that bill passed in six months. Anybody who can't get that bill passed in six months isn't worth his salt. And I was an activist then, and then we became totally frustrated with him. Yeah. It took nine more years, and these were the years in which AIDS, AIDS developed. AIDS epidemic. So yeah. we were, and instead of, instead of twisting arms to get the bill passed, he said, well, they have religious objections, that's okay, I'm not gonna argue with them. And like, what are we gonna do? You're giving people excuses. So what happened? Was it a specific force that made him yes. realize? Yeah, he got into office. Don't forget, he got into office with only 20% of the vote in the first round, mm -hmm. and he had a runoff with Mario Cuomo, mm -hmm. a little bit more about which later. And then uh, he turned to the right. He, he said, you know, I'm not, I'm not the congressman from Greenwich Village anymore. I'm representing the whole city, and they're not so keen on this. And we should say that during his campaign in 1977, he accuses Cuomo of posting signs That's on right. billboards, not billboards, along on traffic, you know. Part uh, of the campaign. What do you call them? Polls, uh, lighting polls. Yeah. That said, vote for Cuomo, not the homo. Now, nobody's ever actually seen these signs or anything like that. And we're, we're getting a note about a sequence here. Nobody's actually ever seen these signs, but uh, uh, um, Koch held it against Cuomo for the rest of his life. Yeah. And in fact, in, a, in an exit interview that was only released after he died, he said he called uh, Mario Cuomo and his son, who worked on that campaign. The, used, the word he used was uh, uh, pricks. Uh, you know, I mean. Uh, Can you say that on Gay USA? Well, I, I guess we just, we just did. did. I guess so, we just did. Go. So that's well. I can't say a lot of the things that Ed Koch said. So, <laughs> so what I so what I think happened. So yeah. here's the problem with Ed Koch: because he didn't own who he was, mm -hmm. a, a gay man. Mm -hmm. He did not see us as his brothers and sisters. And when we were attacked, he didn't, he didn't like come to our side that strongly. Or, Whereas, he, or as he did see us as his brothers and sisters, but had such self-loathing, such fear that that would be the reason why he didn't win the mayoral election or would be rejected well, I, I, uh, by the uh, populace. I'm not suggesting that necessarily uh, an outgate candidate could have won. Because it's always the closeted candidates. It's always the closeted candidates who do horrible things. Yeah. They pass and promote horrible legislation. Well, they they there turn is, there against... There are some straight people who there, do bad there things. There are some straight people who do bad things as well. But it's <laughs> yes. often the ones that we see in terms of the to LGBT. Yeah. Like who you're thinking about? Um, you know, through the ages. Um, wasn't there wasn't there ideas? Uh, who was the guy who did the... Um, the pink uh, during the uh, McCarthy hearings. The uh, oh well, Joe McCarthy was uh, Joe homosexual. McCarthy and also, uh, uh, Roy Cohn, Cohn of Roy course, Cohn, was, yeah. the, was the heart was yeah. was heart. And, and on down the line. So right. yeah. yes, yes, yes. I mean, if you if you are self-loathing, you're likely to do uh, terrible things. So anyway, uh, it was so it was very difficult to work with that on these things, and and he didn't see us as his brothers and sisters. I mean, on and, the other hand, he you know he was very proud of his Jewish identity. Right. Why shouldn't he be? Right. And uh, he was very pro-Israel. If you were against, if you, he thought you were a minority mutely against Israel, and he attacked Obama over this, hmm. he would go for somebody else. He endorsed George Bush for president in 2004, despite the fact that Bush uh, had introduced a constitutional amendment against same-sex yeah. marriage yeah. Uh, because of, the, uh, of his views on, on Israel. Yeah. But he wouldn't do that for us. So that, that really hurt us. And then comes the AIDS crisis. At a critical time when the AIDS crisis hits. At right. a critical time. 1981. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I just want to say it for the record. Ed Koch did not have a meeting with 
people in the AIDS community for 21 months into that crisis. That is a complete outrage. I mean, people say, well, you know, nobody knew what was going on. We were all confused. Nobody really did anything. He was the mayor of the city of New York in 1981 mm -hmm. uh, with, with, at the epicenter of the crisis. I mean, all of you around the world should be concerned about this because that's when the virus got out of control yeah. and left from JFK Airport on a lot of planes, I'm sure, you know, with you know, people who didn't even know they had it. Um, now, again, we didn't discover the virus until 1983, all this kind of stuff, yeah. but it was a public health emergency. You sit everybody down, you say, what can we do? How can we educate people? Even Margaret Thatcher in England, you know. Well, I was gonna say, you have, you she have. She sent brochures out, they started yeah. needle exchange. Yeah. They didn't do needle exchange in the Koch yeah. administration. Diane Feinstein out in California. So you have Mayor Koch. Who's the mayor of San Francisco. Head, who, did, who was light years ahead of Mayor Koch. Really? Of things. Yeah. Uh, so you have Mayor Koch at the head of New York City, and you have Ronald Reagan uh, in, at the head of the United States. Well, was, Reagan uh, was a monster, there's no question. But the thing is, a, a, a supposedly liberal mayor of New York could have done so mm -hmm. much more. And mm -hmm. that's why I can never forgive him. I mean, to watch him being celebrated, everybody say how charming he was and all this other kind of stuff. To me, he will always be a war criminal mm -hmm. for what he did mm -hmm. and did not do, especially during the age crisis and you know his, you know his reasons for not coming out and I talked to him a couple of months ago about this uh, he said I refuse to answer those questions your, your next thing you're going to want to do is put it on a candidate questionnaire to ask someone their sexual orientation now Yetta, you're running for public office has anyone asked Andy, you no one knows uh, on that your I'm a lesbian please can we just keep this between us are, are the cameras rolling well it's a, it is a joke isn't no, it no but you know you know that it is a joke and he's being silly about it he's confusing privacy which is like what you do in your completely private life what you do in bed no, i don't want to know that i wouldn't i wouldn't want to think about that with ed Koch. but having a partner i mean you're open you you are open about your relational life you've been open about that but I only am able to do that because I stand on the shoulders of people oh, like you oh, and oh. others. No, but I do want to say, like, I, I don't, I'm not disagreeing with what you're saying. I'm saying that, you know, it's a testament to what the tyranny of the closet and, and, yeah. that, and that that's really a tremendous uh, thing that people have to grapple with. I mean, you know, the Victory Fund does the work throughout the country to help LGBT candidates even think about how in the world they could run a campaign. It's easier for me because I'm running in the West Village and in Chelsea. Mean, we have an out lesbian mayor of Houston now. And, you know, and we've got Parker. out sheriff in Dallas. We've got in San Diego, which is Republican territory. These are got huge a lot of steps forward, but by no means do we think that there's a level playing field for the LGBT community. And in no stretch of the imagination is the LGBT community appropriately or properly represented well, in government. Last week we talked about that the tiniest town in Kentucky, which just passed a, a gay rights ordinance for the city employees, and we, then we found out a week later that the mayor is the local hairdresser who's an out gay man, and they love him. You know, so uh, you would see the thing is, you would think Ed Koch would be inspired by this and understand this, and that all of all of us would be inspired by these stories and try to live our lives as openly as we can. And that doesn't mean spilling our guts about what we do in bed. It's none of anybody's business. Right. But to own who you are, and certainly to be proud of your partner, which is the only reason Jim Neighbors came out, because he wanted to get married and he had to go to a marriage bureau, so he had to sign something and mm -hmm. it was gonna get out, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. But uh, before that, he never no talked about it. Because no one knew before then. Oh, well, Jim Neighbors. Uh, <laughs> and thank God for all of our strong uh, uh, straight allies as well as they fight for us. And in fact, uh, we just fact-checked this. Obama came out for marriage on May 9th, 2012, and the NAACP came out for marriage on May 19th, 2012. It is so good to have Yetta on this show so legal to fact -checking, clear Andy. up the record. Thank you, Paul. And, uh, but it's so, it, it, it was almost simultaneous. That's what I would like to say to well, you. Well, I guess I was almost thinking. I guess I was thinking of some of the uh, chapters, you know, that did it, but not the national organization. Certainly. So thank Certainly. you, yeah, yes. for being here. Yeah. Now a couple. Do you think of, Michelle Obama supported marriage equality before Barack Obama? Well, she didn't, she didn't say so. Right. You know, and by the way. Former First Lady and former Secretary of State and former Senator Hillary Clinton has yet to make her announcement supporting us on same-sex marriage. Interesting. Well, she She's said busy. as the Secretary of State, you know, she want to get involved in international controversy. On, I mean, that's what was said behind yeah. the scenes. Yeah. But we are expecting any day now that you may be running for president uh, that you'll be Hillary. 
I know you watch the show if you'd like to come on. And actually, we got, I got a very nice note this week that said uh, Jared Polis watches the show, oh, nice. <laughs> which yeah. is very gratifying. Uh, the out Congress member Congressman in Colorado. Colorado. Yep. Yeah. A couple of other political notes. Sure. Can we do those yeah. before we move on to some things? Well, let's see where we are in the, the lineup. The don't oh, well, say gay law, is that what you want to talk about? Um, well, that's kind of kind of ridiculous. In Tennessee, there's uh, more crazy talk from some yes. Tea Party uh, state representatives this, who who we probably shouldn't even be giving airtime to. No, Andy, I mean but, I think uh, we should we should name this person, and we should people need to do something about him, and the Republican Party needs to do something about him. His name is Stacy Campfield. We've heard about him before. He's always tried to get these "Don't Say Gay" bills through that say you can't talk about gay issues in the uh, um, schools. Right, so, God forbid. But this bill... This is even more repugnant because it would require school counselors and teachers to report any kid who confessed to homosexuality. It's, it's just outrageous. It violates confidentiality. And he's saying uh, homosexuality is a danger to children if they engage in it because they will die. They're going to get and AIDS all, and all die, kind right? Of stuff. I mean, yeah. it, 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 he says, all I'm about is protecting children. Uh, it is just outrageous. Although, you know, uh, we talked about the passing of Gene Manford, a, a cup, cup, the founder of the Parents and Friends of Lesbians yeah. and Gays, yep. Yep. a couple of uh, uh, weeks ago. And uh, her, she's, her son went to a counselor uh, when he was troubled, and she didn't yet know he was gay. Mm -hmm. And she did get a call from the psychiatrist uh, saying, oh, you know, your son is gay. I mean, that's the kind of stuff that used to happen in those days. Yeah. And we don't want it to be happening anymore. Yeah. So we know the folks in Tennessee are going to get on this and do something about it. I don't think it has a chance of passing, but it is, it is amazing that this stuff keeps and going up as legislation. Then in Nebraska, this is a story in the realm of those darned heterosexuals, <laughs> the Lieutenant Governor, Rick Sheehy, we have a picture of him, I think, somewhere, um, has resigned abruptly in a scandal involving thousands of calls to four women on his state-issued cell phone, including one woman who said she had a romantic relationship with him, so he just resigned over this. And this is one, again, one of these traditional values, right-wing Republicans, who was always sticking it to us, yeah. similar to the guy in Tennessee. Now he says he's grossly mistaken. You know, if, if you guys wouldn't be so censorious, maybe you could, you know, have a colorful private life. And look, our, our Fantastic governor... Fantastic word, by the way. Our, what? Censorious. Well, our governor lives Can with a woman with that. That is actually really a word. We're going to get back I on that. I think so. <laughs> I think so. Our Sorry, governor, governor, Andy Cuomo, yes. lives with a woman uh, without benefit of marriage, and it doesn't seem to impact his uh, standing. Everybody should be able to do what they want to do. Okay. Uh, We're going to talk about the, uh, the marriage. Well, some mar We're going to talk about some marriage issues elsewhere. Sure, Illinois could. passes. Uh, it's moving towards passing marriage equality. Which yes, is fantastic. Nine to five in the Senate Executive Committee. They passed the bill, and they are trying to pass it in the Senate by Valentine's Day. Isn't that sweet? A little gift. Has uh, what's Rahm Emanuel's position? I'm assuming he's oh, he's for. Uh, he's very for much it. for. Yeah. Very much for. Rahm. I don't imagine he. So was. it goes Barack Obama, NAACP, Rahm Emanuel. I think that was ten <laughs> days later. Okay. Uh-huh. What else? All right. Then, but, uh, so that's Illinois. We, we're having a, a, a bit of a problem in uh, a state Oregon. we wouldn't imagine we would have a and problem And we have a with. news report about this. Yes. So it's, a, it's about a baker, and we'll run it and give you, we'll talk about this in a little bit. It has to do what they're doing. I'm making a choice to not be a part of it. A Gresham baker refuses to make a wedding cake for a same-sex couple. Now the state of Oregon is investigating whether his business violated the law. Good afternoon and thanks for joining us. I'm Angelica Thornton. And I'm Steve Van Bryant is off today. K2's Erica Nachlin talked with the business owner. And Erica, you also have a complaint uh, copy of that and the letter he got from the state as well? Yeah, the complaint is from one of the brides-to-be. She doesn't want to comment yet, not until she gets further legal advice. But the complaint says she used sweet cakes in Gresham for her mom's wedding. It was fine. When her partner went back for their wedding cake, the owner refused. And that owner doesn't deny it. Walk into okay. Sweet Cakes here in Gresham, and it's pretty clear faith is as important as the cupcakes. To owner Aaron Klein, who proudly displays the crosses of his Christianity, his religious beliefs will even outweigh his business's bottom line. If I have to, you know, I guess, quote, be penalized for my beliefs, then I guess, then, well, let it be what it is. You'd rather have to shut down your business than, than, than be forced cake. to do something that violates my conscience, exactly. Klein says he's refused to make wedding cakes for same sex couples before, several times, in fact. But this is the first time he's received notice from the state. The complainant says Klein not only refused to serve them, but also proceeded to say we were abominations unto the Lord. 
Klein denies the harsh words. At which point I apologized for wasting their time and said that we unfortunately don't do same-sex marriages. Honestly, did not mean to hurt anybody, didn't mean to make anybody upset. It's just something that I believe in very strongly. But beliefs aren't enough to cover him under Oregon law. The statute says any place or service offering to the public accommodations must provide full and equal accommodations without any distinction on account of race, color, religion, sex, or sexual orientation. But the question becomes, does his constitutional rights outweigh state statute? My First Amendment rights allow me to practice my religion as I see fit. Now, there is no exception under the state's anti-discrimination law for religious beliefs, but ultimately it would be up to a judge to decide if Klein's argument would hold up that his religious practices are protected by the Constitution, which would trump state law. Now, right now it is being investigated by the Attorney General's office, but I also touched base with the uh, Bureau of Labor and Industries. A spokesman there says he feels this would violate the law. He encourages that complaint to file a complaint with that bureau as well. It will be so interesting to see what happens next because so many people are talking about this. Even that owner said he's been getting emails oh, and I'm phone sure. calls from both sides. Mm -hmm. Okay, Erica, thank you. I'm sure he has. Uh, two things about the uh, Oregon Baker. Uh, you know, one, you know, seems like a, a fairly uh, pleasant individual who's, who, who's not... He didn't mean to harm who, anybody, who, Andy. But, who, well, he, ha he is harming people. Yes, and the, the, the thing is this, uh, he ought to reflect, pray over if you like, <laughs> uh, has he ever created a wedding cake for somebody who was divorced and remarried, for instance? I mean, that's against uh, Jesus' dictums. You know, that's what religion teaches, that you shouldn't have divorce and mm -hmm. things like that. Mm -hmm. And I doubt that that's true. Mm -hmm. So the point is this. If, if he wants to, uh, he could say, I'm not going to make any more wedding cakes in this shop, and then he doesn't do it for straights or gays, and he doesn't get, because I think he said in the past he wouldn't mind serving, making birthday cakes for gay people. <laughs> but he just doesn't It's okay make for us them. to get old, just not get married. No, so uh, he is violating the law at this point. Certainly, I think fairly yeah. clearly it'll Public be worked out by the, so, by the uh, courts. Yeah. Now, uh, one place that has been welcoming to uh, gay people for a long time is uh, Disney. Disneyland, Disney World, they have the gay days and all that kind of stuff. Well, uh, uh, hold on to your seats. Uh, Disney World's uh, first, this guy, is a, we have a picture of him. His name is George Calogridis. Uh, he is now uh, the uh, head of uh, the Walt D Disney Company's, uh, well, what are, no, I'm trying to look at the division that he's, World, that, that he's uh, heading. Yeah. The Disney World division. Yep. Uh, he was actually their first employee in 1971. He was just like a, really a kid. Yeah. That's what it says, that he's yeah. been through the company since the uh, uh, 1971. He had a job bussing tables there, and he's an out gay man. So that's the news, of course. That's why we're talking about him. And he's also on the board of the Out and Equal Board of Directors, uh, which is good. So he's involved in the gay community down there in Florida. And uh, congratulations. No, it's and, great. Uh, that's a breakthrough. It's I, great. I hope, I hope it doesn't lead to I wonder to how it impacts crazy... Disney World's uh, presentation and theme park if they do anything we with the gay theme. We shall see. Well, you know, the, the, I'm, I think its name is, uh, I'm trying to, no, it's terrible that I'm not remembering his name. Paul will have to help me. Uh, the guy who runs uh, Disney's uh, play division, you know, the Broadway plays and all that kind of stuff, uh -huh. theater division. Uh -huh. uh, he's an out gay man yeah. and he's been doing that for years. Yeah. Uh, oh, those good. guys. It's great. All right. A couple of, uh, we were, a couple maybe of, not so important. Not, it is important, but not as important. Other stories, a gay dog is saved from euthanasia. Someone was willing to go to the point uh, to kill their dog because it was... Um, yes, this uh, happened. Where did this happen? It's humping the proper term. Is it was, this guy uh, it and was this guy... I'm, I'm gonna, I gotta having get sexual it. relations with a... I have to get a, it right. Uh, you got to give me a second another here. Another ostensibly gay or, or bisexual This dog. is in Tennessee again. This guy had a male pit bull who yeah. was, uh, was uh, do we, did you run the picture up there? Uh, who was uh, humping a, ma a male dog, humping a male dog, and he threw him away because he refuses to have a gay dog. <laughs> so uh, there was a guy who went on Facebook and <laughs> wanted to save this dog, and they have uh, been successful in finding someone to adopt. The gay dog. I mean, what? We're, I mean, you we're think, joking about it, but I mean, it's the AP just... banned the word homophobia. What is that except yeah. homophobia? Yeah. All right. Now, Oof. some other some other political notes. Um, in Massachusetts, the president of the Senate has appointed as the majority leader an out gay man, Senator Stanley Rosenberg. Congratulations to him. He's the new majority leader there. That's great. We're taken over, yeah. Yeah, well, maybe. Have you, you noticed? Know. It's good. It's good. Well, we've already had a lesbian speaker here in the in for, the uh, city of New York. Yeah. Um, we would have had a gay mayor uh, a long time ago if Ed had come out, but he didn't. <laughs>
Uh, in Wyoming, they had a bunch of. Wait a minute, that's like a tree falls in the woods story. Did did we have an did we have a gay mayor, even though he wasn't a homosexual out. mayor? But did it, we have we, a homosexual? You need mayor, to have an out did, mayor. I mean, I uh, don't count the the people uh, who stayed in the closet. I mean, uh, come on, we could we could go back through history half the, and talk half about of Lincoln and Buchanan yes, yes, and yes. Uh, a lot of other people. Yes. And there are stories about Washington. I am not making this up. There is evidence <laughs> around there is re evidence around all these people, certainly about Lincoln. It's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was that's why I was so disappointed that Tony Kushner, who's out gay, didn't sort of integrate something gay about in the movie. In the it should have it should have been there should have yeah. been a reference, yeah. Now no. Wyoming had a bunch of votes on gay stuff this week and you know the news is is that they came really close to doing some great things in Wyoming. Mm -hmm. uh, but we lost. Mm -hmm. now, the final vote uh, in the Senate on a civil rights bill on sexual orientation and gender identity was 13 to 15, even though it had been advanced by committee. The House uh, rejected a marriage equality bill by four to five in committee, uh, but advanced a domestic partners bill by seven to two, and then they lost in the full House, but only by a margin of 24 to 35. Yeah. And, you know, I think it was uh, HRC put somebody out there to kind of work on these things so that, you know, the national movement was involved. But that's, you know, they're, they're making progress there in Wyoming, for sure. There's a lot happening in the Midwest. You know, we talked about uh, what's happening in Illinois. Uh, obviously, gay marriage happened in, uh, I always mix up Ohio and Iowa. Was it Iowa or Ohio that passed gay marriage? No, uh, uh, Iowa. Iowa got it through the courts. Iowa, Iowa got it through the courts. There's, there's a lot. I mean, we make an assumption that all of it's happening on either the West Coast or the East Coast, but uh, there's know. a lot happening Iowa's in the Iowa was before New York. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, now, Virginia is another story where I went to school down there, of course. The House of Delegates passed a bill 80 to 19 over our objections, uh, which basically lets a student organization off the hook if they want to sort of, uh, if they feel uncomfortable with like, certain kinds of people because of their religious things. They don't have to let you into the group. And this, I mean, it's just, they wanna, it is yeah. just outrageous. These are, now I'm talking about here, publicly funded institutions. So it's really, really outrageous. Yeah. And how about our friend uh, Robert Pinter? Uh, now we're going to talk about New York stuff. Sure. It's happening right now. We've had Robert on the show. Stop you know, the arrests. Uh, I don't, don't want to get too much back into this, but this guy, this is years ago now, um, he's a 50-year-old man, and the, the city was trying to close adult bookstores, and they were phonying up arrests for mm -hmm. prostitution mm -hmm. by having young cops come up to older men and say, would you like to go with me? And the older guy goes, well, I wasn't really looking around, but I'm not very good looking. But okay, sure, you're pretty good looking. Let's go. And then nothing wrong. The with younger that. cop would say, "And I'll give you fifty dollars right. to to blow me," is what right. they would say as you're going out the door. At which point you would be arrested for prostitution. Right. I mean, it was a total setup. You're right. not a prostitute. Robert is not a prostitute. Right. Uh, and so he has been fighting with the city of New York over this for years in court. His and arrest was back, what, in 2008, it maybe? Was it was a while ago. It was a while ago. Yeah. We've been on the case for a long time. But the ruling in his case this week was that he is allowed to hear the deposition of the cop in this case. And the judge said, you know, I know he's an undercover cop, but he's already seen him. Right. What's the difference? Right. So that was the ruling, and we and Robert has really persevered in this case. He really it has. It really takes a lot of guts to follow these things through. In fact, I think he initially pled an ACD because he just wanted it to go away before he kind of started to proceed affirmatively. He was able to unseal the ACD and get it uh, overturned. Yep. That that was a huge step, and then has been. Yes. So just, keep uh, fighting. Yeah. Don't give up. And then in Orange County, California, in a town called Westminster, uh, the Tet Parade, which is the Vietnamese parade, they want to keep the gay group out. And they're asking the uh, gay Vietnamese groups to sacrifice and not march with them. So they're considering Oof. action out there uh, to march in the parade. And uh, we'll see how that works out. Now, we haven't talked about the Super Bowl. The Ravens. Did you watch the game? I did watch oh, the game. Oh, good for you. Yeah. I only watched part did of it. Did you watch it? I was busy. Yeah. Well. <laughs> But so I, I, did see, I, did, I did see the last, the exciting last few minutes, and it was. And mm -hmm. I guess we should say it's nice to see the Ravens win because yeah. uh, the uh, the I, 49ers were giving us a lot of trouble in the last. I felt week. it was kind of like the what was the Billy Jean King and uh, Billy Riggs, the battle of the sexes. Bobby back, Riggs. Bobby Riggs. This was kind of like I felt this was this this was like the gay showdown, you know, yeah. the, the good guys and the bad guys battling it out. In the run up to the Super Bowl. Players get asked, because they got two weeks to get ready, they ask a lot of questions that they don't ask during the regular mm -hmm. season. And some reporters started ask, asking this guy, Chris Culliver, on the 49ers, what he thought about gays and having gays on the team. 
And he 49ers, said... 49ers, I just want to remind everyone, is from San Francisco. The San Francisco 49ers, yes. which was especially surprising. But so Culliver goes on, no, ain't got no gay people on the team. I'm quoting here. Uh, they got to get out of here if they do. Can't be with that sweet stuff. Uh, nah, can't be in the locker room, man. Nah, no, no, no. You know, so that's what he's saying. We could have run the tape, but I mean, it's you know, we don't want to give him too much publicity. Right. And uh, he did have to apologize for this, and he, the apology, apology was kind of ridiculous. He said, on reflection, after looking at it in print, oh, uh, I, I realized sure they were hurtful and, and yeah. ugly. Yeah, I'm sure he wrote that uh, verbatim himself. And the 49ers condemned it. Uh, some people were calling for him to be suspended. Uh, which didn't happen. Well, what was interesting, actually, in that in that back and forth, it was revealed, and he was confronted with the fact that he had been part of an "It Gets Better" video. Yeah. Uh, and they asked him why he did that. He said he didn't do it. When they showed him the tape, he said, "Oh, I didn't realize. I thought that was just an anti-bullying tape. I didn't know it was an anti-bullying tape for gay people, as if somehow bullying against gay people would be okay." Um, <laughs> and renounced the tape, and then uh, Dan Savage pulled it from the website. So, yes, yeah. it is a little ridiculous. Now, no, it is true that It Gets Better is not just about gays. It's about anybody who's Abs being bullied. Absolutely. And a lot of the people who do interviews for It Gets absolutely. Better talk about them being bullied as, as girls, as people of color, uh, all, uh, fat, yep. uh, anything, you know. So, uh, but uh, this guy is pretty clueless and obviously needs And it seems especially painful that he would have a, an awareness that bullying is wrong for all of those other, but, but, but not wrong for, for people who are uh, LGBT. Right. And conversely, the Ravens came out really strongly. Um, uh, Brandon, who, whose last name I can never uh, properly pronounce. I am Badejo. I am Badejo, uh, came out in support of, uh, of uh, gay people, and uh, a, uh, a legislator in, in Baltimore started to uh, attack him for that, and his entire team came out in support with him for uh, LGBT folks. He's been great. He t during the Super Bowl period, he taped another PSA for same-sex marriage. And if we have time, at the end of the show here, we're going to show you this interview that he did on CNN, yeah. uh, where he talks a really fantastic yeah. interview. Uh, so we really should get to that. I don't know how much more news we have a couple of other uh, little small items that we just want to go over. Yes. Um, the English did a, a seven-year study on bullying uh, 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 for gay and lesbian teens, and they did find out that young gay men have it worse than their lesbian peers. Does that jive with your uh, what you understand? That's basically the finding of the study. Hmm. It is pretty fascinating, hmm. but it, and it shows that it declines as, as kids get older, thank goodness, and what they're saying is it really does get better. Uh, I'm sorry, I didn't see what. What's five, that? Five, five. five minutes. Five. Oh, we got five minutes. Um, and then we read about this 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 poor kid who uh, uh, hanged himself two weeks ago in Portland. Jaden uh, Bell. Yeah, yeah. Jaden Bell has uh, has has died. He was 15 years old. Too He'd many stories like that. Bullied. I'm not going to do that story in this context. And um, uh, uh, just a couple a couple of entertainment notes. Oh, I did see. I finally saw a play by Barbara Kahn. Oh yeah, she's Le a tremendous lesbian yep. playwright play called Crossing Paths in Washington Square, all about gay life in New York in 1913. It's not, it looks Isn't like if you, if you yeah. sit, it's, it's, it looks like sitting on a park bench in Washington Square was better than using Grinder. I mean, you were <laughs> going to meet somebody and be gay. I mean, I, I appreciate the way she br brings out uh, bits of our history. Barbara Kahn uh, does great historical stuff. She did some stuff on the Triangle Shirtwaist Factory and did this great play uh, when their anniversary came up. She's a tremendous playwright. And if we can, uh, we'd like to go out now with uh, what we can show you of the uh, uh, Br Br Brandon, Brendan, uh, Ian Badejo interview from the Baltimore Ravens. Why have you chosen this Super Bowl to talk about, to make a platform out of marriage equality? Well, I don't really consider it gay rights. I just call it rights. Everyone deserves to be treated equally. Um, it's a cause that I've been really outspoken for since 2009. And on the biggest platform in the world, and everybody's watching, a billion people watching, everybody hears your voice, I decided that, I mean, I knew organically it was going to happen, that we were going to talk about equal rights and equality and marriage equality and whatnot. But now that I'm a Super Bowl champion, now my voice just projects that much further, and hopefully we can lead to even more change and more positive things for the LGBT. LGBT community. You said it's equal rights. When people equate it to the civil rights movement, some people are offended by that, others see it uh, as the same thing. What do you make of it? 
Well, the thing is, if you're educated on the issue and you sit down and you talk to a gay person and, you know, I've been talking to gay people. Everyone's been talking to gay people our entire lives, whether we know it or not. But um, we really believe that you're born gay. And if I've had plenty of conversations with people that are gay and they say they're born gay, no different than me being born this beautiful almond coconut color that I am. <laughs> people are born gay. So why treat them any differently? Um, it's time that we, we treat everybody fairly. And not only are, are we trying to dictate who people should love, we're also trying to dictate who people should be. If a woman wants to wear man's clothes or if a man wear, wants to wear women's clothes or you feel like you're a woman on the inside and you're really a man, who, who cares? Let's just, let's just treat everybody equally. Let's move on. Let's evolve as a culture, as a people. And especially, I mean, we think it's bad in the United States. I'm Nigerian, half Nigerian. And in Nigeria, I get so many letters and emails from young Nigerians being persecuted or being thrown in jail or even being murdered for being who they are. And um, so we think we have it bad here. It's not bad here, but we can can make a change in the United States that can affect the whole world. Brennan, during Super Bowl week, San Francisco 49ers cornerback Chris Culliver made controversial remarks over not welcoming gay football players in the locker room. What he said, I, I, I'm not the gay people, we, I, I, I can't play with them. He said, we don't like that sweet stuff. What do you make of his, of his comments? He, he eventually apologized for them. Yeah, well, I mean, it's just so ironic because it's a game of football and it's a masculine game and we play so hard against each other and for each other and you ask why did the Ravens win the Super Bowl this year is because we loved each other more than the 49ers loved the, the man next to them so I love the man next to me my teammates loved me the coaches loved us and we won this football game because of love we didn't win because we're tougher or more macho or anything like that we won because we loved each other more we're gonna do anything for the man next to us and is that sweet I mean I don't know I think that's just that's just being a person and and just having a task at hand so um, I think more than anything that it's gonna be a learning experience from him especially making the comments in San Francisco and I was raised in Santa Cruz, California, just a little bit south of San Francisco and the LGBT community is so near and dear to us. It's re really considered the hub of um, LGBT rights in the whole United States. So you have to know your demographic and really we have to start talking about this issue and we have to educate people and there's groups like Athlete Ally and myself, Chris Cluey, Scott Fajita. Um, we're all about inclusiveness in sports and treating everybody equally and you know once we start having this conversation and a lot of people don't have have this conversation that we re the athletes will really start to realize in the NFL and we can make such a big change that everybody's the same we're all equal it doesn't matter if you put your minds together no matter what that person's background is or what their orientation is that we can make change and do positive things so it's, it's unfortunate that he made the comments I know he's sorry for them and I know he's gonna make it right um, when he gets the opportunity to do so you put yourself really in in the bullseye in the middle of this uh, by talking about it and there were people who were saying to the league commissioner that, hey, you need to shut your player up. Did you get any backlash from any higher-ups or anyone on your team or anyone in the NFL because you were so outspoken about, uh, about gay rights? Um, no, there wasn't necessarily any backlash. Um, but some, some things that happened that weren't necessarily good, but so many more things happened that were great and monumental. Um, I think the most important thing is in the state of Maryland, Marylanders went out and voted for marriage equality, and that's really trend-setting and trailblazing because we're the first state to do so. And it was just a Wow. What a, what, a, what a powerful thing. Go online yeah. to the CNN website, and you can watch that whole thing. It's just a fantastic thing. Yetta, thank you so much for oh, being with us. thanks for having me on. It's great. And uh, we will see you next week with Ann Northrup. And uh, in the meantime, have a good week. Don't forget, there are going to be big demonstrations around the country uh, around the marriage thing. MarriageEquality.org. Check it out. Find yes. the locations. We'll see you. Bye-bye.